Underground restaurants, secret eateries, and pop-up diners, these places are everywhere. I'm Stephen Page, musician, food lover, and adventurer, and I'm going to eat at the best of these illegal, out-of-the-way places all across the continent. And Stephen Page is on the BT couch at 640. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for getting up early for us. Pleasure to be here. You've got a little Anthony Bourdain in you there. You know, there are worse comparisons. I love him. That's why I say <laughs> he's it. He's one of the few that I actually can tolerate yeah, in those right. food shows. Uh, I'm certainly not him. I'm not a cook, right? And, and he, as he always says, he's not a chef. He's a cook. But I'm... Um, I'm just a food lover. I'm a guy who's traveled a lot and uh, eaten a lot and uh, and like to take people in my travels with me. Illegal Eats, how did the idea of this come about? Well, initially the producers of the show, uh, a company called uh, Farpoint Films out of, out of uh, Winnipeg, came to me with the idea. that They had the idea for the show and for whatever reason they said I was the guy. Um, I guess they'd read a bunch of interviews with me where I talked about uh, my love of food or, and uh, you know what it means to me, my connection between food and culture and travel and so on. And I'd uh, written a blog for the Wine Spectator magazine and so on over the oh, years. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Cool. Yeah, so I'm kind of in there a bit and uh, that kind of exploration really appeals to me and I was uh, we did a, a, a test run of it in San Francisco about a year and a half ago and it was as soon as we did that, we knew we had a show. It's on Travel and Leisure. And Travel and Escape. Uh, Travel and Escape, sorry. Great uh, channel that uh, you can just pop on and, and enjoy uh, food show after food show after food show that does integrate the culture of the cities that it goes to. And, and you are going to integrate in Illegal Eats also the music culture. Because, That's right. I mean, obviously, this is where we know you from. Your music is both with the Bare Naked Ladies and as a standalone uh, solo artist mm -hmm. has been exceptional and sort Thank of you. definitively Canadian. But this program is going to take you all over. Right. We get to travel uh, in this season all over North America, so Canada and the U.S. And uh, I got to write the theme song for it and perform that. And a lot of the, uh, the, the incidental music throughout the show is mine. And as we travel also, I get to sometimes invite uh, local musicians like Mike Doty from Soul Coffee or my friend Paul Myers that many Vancouverites may remember. He lo now lives down in California, so he, sh he shows up in a show. And, How do you uh, find an illegal restaurant? Well, sometimes it's really easy, because sometimes it's just a matter of the Google. But uh, other times it's word of mouth. And what we would find is we would show up in a city, do interviews with kind of legit above-ground chefs or bloggers or whatever else, and we'd tell them what our plans were, that we'd found a place online. Uh, and they'd say, oh, that's that sounds good, but you should try this one. This one's really happening right now and they would send us to a place we'd never even heard of and uh, and end up having some fantastic meals. And in some situations, correct me if I'm wrong, I've never had the opportunity to go to one of these sort of pop-up restaurants that happen, but it could literally be in somebody's house. That's right. That they've cleared out the living room and said, here you go. It's kind of like the chef's table, but it's... Yeah, very much so. So sometimes they are huge events with a couple hundred people, like in a big barn somewhere with a big right. theme. But for the most part, what we went to were um, were ones that were hosted in people's houses. What makes them illegal is that they're, they're charged for it and they're serving beer and wine or whatever else and uh, so or sometimes they're serving um Ingredients you wouldn't be allowed to sell in a restaurant, wild right. game, and those kinds of things. Um, you know, the, the first one of the first underground or pop-up type restaurants I ever heard of was in the, it was fictionalized in the in the the novel Stanley Park, from, you know, which takes place here in Vancouver, and it's a very extreme version of a of an underground pop-up restaurant. But even then, it, it seemed very um, uh, romantic to me and something worth worth checking out. Can you give us uh, before you go the most um, bizarre thing you've ever tasted at a pop-up restaurant, or the best thing? What's your what's your most memorable moment so far that we might see on Elite? Uh, well, you know, early on in the season, you will see me eating uh, balut, which is a uh, it's it's actually one of those kind of fear factor type foods. It's like that's not what we seek out, right. but if it's on the menu for the for the customers, then I have to partake. This is a, a duck egg fertilized with the full grown embryo inside, Ooh. and then you've got to eat it. And I'm not a squeamish person, but the feathers and a little much little face in there. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Ew. Not my favorite. Stephen Page, Illegal Eats. You can catch it on Travel and Escape, and it premieres... Tonight. Tonight. Nine o'clock. There it is. We will be watching. Thank you for coming by. Thanks for having we me. We appreciate it, and Bye. look forward to uh, to enjoying much more of your food experiences. We were told foodie's a bad word in the U.S., so we got to use it. Right, that's what I've heard. That's what we've heard.